That I do way past cool. What's good, YouTube family? Happy Memorial Day to everybody. I got this special tribute video about the Memorial Day origin. Let's go. In a hidden chapter in history where the first Memorial Day is not born from official decrees, but from the heart of freedmen in a war-torn city. This tale lost to the history books and bare beneath the soil of Charleston, South Carolina. Join me as we talk about the forgotten story of the first Memorial Day. And if you like stories like this, you can find more stories like this at OneMikeHistory.com. Also, so you can support the YouTube channel. And I have a new channel, One Mike 2. Please subscribe. But without further ado, let's get started. Memorial Day's origins are shrouded in mystery and intrigue. A numerous towns across the United States fight for the honor of being recognized as its birthplace. Among those, Waterloo, New York, or Carbondale, Illinois, stand out. Yet historians believed that the first continuous commemoration might be in Columbus, Mississippi, where in April of 1866, a group of compassionate women took it upon themselves to decorate the graves of fallen soldiers, turning their grief into a solemn tradition. However, a lesser known yet equally compelling tale comes from Freedmen in Charleston, South Carolina. This hidden chapter came to light thanks to David Blight, a professor of American history at Yale University. On a fateful day in 1996, while digging through boxes at Harvard's Halton Library, he stumbled upon a treasure, a handwritten account of the first Decoration Day in 1865. Accompanying this narrative was a clipping from a New York Tribune labeled First Decoration Day. So, in the spring of 1865, the Civil War just ended. The city of Charleston laid in ruins, a somber backdrop against a slow march towards freedom. The war had left many scars, but none more profound than the makeshift prison at Washington's race course in Jockey Club, a once lavish playground for the Southern elite, was now a stark reminder of cruelty and captivity. Here, in the open-air field of the racetrack, more than 260 Union soldiers perished, subjugated to disease and exposure, their bodies hastily buried into a mass grave. Once Confederate forces evacuated, leaving behind the battered city, an extraordinary event unfolded, initiated by the newly freed African Americans. These men and women who had just endured the shackles of enslavement stepped forward to honor those who laid unremembered in the makeshift graves, and as a first act of liberty was not one of celebration for themselves, but one of commemoration for the fallen. With meticulous care, they exhumed the mass graves, and over ten days, they reburied each soldier, transforming the site into a dignified resting place. They erected a towering whitewashed fence around the newly sanctified ground, declaring it martyrs of the race course. This act was not just about giving the soldiers a proper burial, but it was a profound statement of humanity and grace from those who had long been denied it. And then, in April 1st, 1865, what happened next was truly unprecedented. What can only be described as a collective moment of catharsis. Approximately 10,000 people, mostly black freedmen in Charleston, South Carolina, gathered at the race course. The day commemorates with a parade of 3,000 black school children who marched holding roses and sinking John Brown's body. They followed by scores of adults from aid society for free black men and women. But these scenes were not about a solemn morning, but a peaceful celebration and a tribute to the spirit of the fallen and the declaration of a new beginning. Throughout the day, black pastors delivered moving sermons, led spiritual hymns, filled the air of hope and renewal, and families gathered for picnics under the warm spring air, sharing stories and dreams for the future. Patriotic songs echoed throughout the day, and as the afternoon wore on, black and white Union regiments marched around the grave sites in a powerful display of unity. The graves themselves were transformed with a tapestry of flowers, filled with sweet scents, mingled with the spring breeze, and the sight was said to have brought a tear of joy to many an eye. It was a heartful tribute, a moment of pure human connection from the depths of sorrow and strife. For many years afterwards, the story remained hidden, cloaked in the silence of the white community of Charleston, and briefly resurfaced in a forgotten correspondence in a 1916 letter 
from the United Daughters of the Confederacy in New Orleans seeking information about a large parade of freedmen on a horse track at the end of the war. The reply from the Charleston chapter was regretful and evasive, stating that I regret I am unable to gather any official information in response to this. Decades later, Union General John A. Logan led a veterans group call for a National Day of Remembrance for Fallen Soldiers, which was officially marked as Memorial Day, March 30th, 1868. Celebrations began taking place at Arlington Cemetery, and with each passing year, the origins of the day in Charleston grew dimmer and faded from the collective memory of the nation. Fast forward to the 20th century, when the once sacred site of the old racetrack was replaced with urban development, and the original graves were relocated to Buford's National Cemetery. Thus, the true origins of Memorial Day were overshadowed by a more formal national observance. However, the story doesn't end there. Many years later, at the Smithsonian National Museum of American History, historian David Blight shared a forgotten history of the first Memorial Day. After his presentation, an older black woman approached him, her voice tinged with curiosity and awe. She accounted her grandfather had told her stories of a parade led by freedmen on an old racetrack. Stories that she always wondered if they were actually a part of family legend or something more substantial. She asked Blight, do we know stories are true? Visibly moved, Blight, confirmation, renewed interest and validation to the legacy preserved through family tales but lost to the public knowledge. And as we celebrate Memorial Day each year, it serves as a reminder, not just for those who died in past wars, but also as a strength resilient to who, despite being oppressed, have contributed profoundly to our shared history. Thank you. I'm your host, Country Boy. This has been One Mike History. This is the story of the first Memorial Day. If you enjoy shows like this, you can find more stories like this at OneMikeHistory.com. Also, I have a new channel, One Mike 2. You can get out of your only episodes there. And I would like to thank all of my Patreon subscribers and my members. I love you all. And without you, none of this could be possible. Peace.